Well, good evening, everyone. It's Saturday the 27th, so day 27 of the carnivore diet. I've had a an entirely lazy day at home today. I didn't wake up till half eight this morning. I laid in bed till half 10 or 11 o'clock almost. Got up, lazy day, played some video games all day, pretty much didn't move out of the chair. Fantastic. I needed a relaxing day, just doing nothing. It's 10.30 in the evening and I literally opened my laptop two minutes ago. It's the first time I've had pretty much any tech other than so, sort of uh, looking through my phone over the last um, maybe a couple of hours or something, but basically no tech. And I was doing that while I was watching a movie. Um, so where do we get? Um, interestingly, this morning I woke up at weigh in and was down to 96.5. So lost almost a half a pound again. So maybe some of the water weight that I put on from the electrolytes has washed through. It's the only thing I can think of. I literally haven't done anything else. I haven't done any exercise. I haven't changed anything that I ate. So it seemed like I maybe lost a little bit of water weight. I had really good sleep, slept a long time last night. So that was good. I've done hardly any steps today, but I haven't really eaten that much either. Although um, my wife was in London today doing some stuff. And when she came back, I just said to her, maybe we could get a Chinese and I know that's not on the diet, but, but stick with me for a second. So I had some beef satay skewers. So literally just beef. Um, and they were, it was a decent sized beef skewer this time. So maybe hundred, 120 grams, something like that of beef, um, four beef skewers in a little bit of a peanut sauce. And there was a tiny bit of sauce on there. So not really enough to worry about. And I also got a um, a chicken curry with it as well. So same sort of thing, really just a, a really, really light curry sauce um, on some chicken. So it was just something a little bit different. I know it's strictly not on the diet, but I just, I needed something. I needed something different just, I think, for my head. Um, and I tell you what, if that's the only cheat that I have, then I'm doing pretty well. I've never gone this far on a low carb diet without having a, a cheat day or, you know, normally what I would do is I would go a week or two weeks to get on and then I'd go sort of five or six days and then I'd have a day off and I'd have carbs and I'd just eat whatever I wanted to eat for one day and then get back on the diet again. But I haven't done that this time. So even when I cheat, I still try and cheat as close to the diet as I possibly can. So I don't go off and eat cinnamon rolls and Oreo cookies and pop tarts and all the stuff that I really want to eat. So anyway, don't at me. I cheated a little bit today, but it could have been a lot worse, honestly. So we'll see where that gets me. Um, I don't know what the plan is for tomorrow. I am hoping to get up and get out and do a little bit of do some stuff tomorrow. It was also bitterly cold today and I really couldn't get out because I've got problems with my motorcycle. So there were a few bits and pieces that were kind of getting in the way of me getting out and doing something. Um, I'm going to try and deal with that tomorrow, but I can't do anything with my bike until early next week anyway. So I'm at the mercy of, of the wife taking me around. So we might go into town tomorrow and I might do some work in the office and I'll try and go to the gym anyway. Um, I think that's pretty much it for today. I can't, I don't really have anything else to feed back. The other thing that's been annoying me is I've been having a problem with my, my watch that I use to record body fat. And it's really interesting also. So I, I use the fat percentage that comes from my watch, which is around, let's call it 30, 32, 32, th mid 31s to 32%. The scale that I use comes back at around 18%. And I have no idea which one. They both use the electric sort of sensors to do that. The scale, obviously, I stand on barefoot and it takes a reading. The watch takes a reading and I just put my fingers on it and it takes a reading as well. 
the watch is maybe five years newer than the scale. But I assume that both of them are inaccurate to a certain point. But and just like with step counting. So this is the thing that I learned. Um, and maybe this is something good to talk about is errors and everybody saying, oh, but it's not accurate. And it counted 5,000 steps and I walked 5,430. Who cares? It doesn't matter because what you need to do is use the same tool to measure all the time. So if your watch only measures, for example, 5,000 steps, but you think you did 5,500, it doesn't matter because it said 5,000. So when it measures tomorrow and it says you did 5,500, then you probably did 500 more steps than you did the previous day. It could have in reality been 6,300, but again, it doesn't matter. The thing is, is what you're looking for is the change from day to day. So that's why I don't, I, th I find it really odd that it's off by 15% um, from one thing to the other. And something makes me want to believe the scale more than the watch. But I don't know why. And I don't know. I think the only way to really test it would be to go somewhere to an actual clinic where they do a proper body fat test. And then they could come back with the sort of official number. And then I could see which one's correct. But I don't know. I assume the truth is in there somewhere. But anyway... I always try to use the same tool consistently so I can see what it's doing. So on the watch, it started out 32.2. It's been as low as 31, yeah, 0.4. Sorry, I'm just looking at the list. 31.3, and it's been as high as 33. So it is varying up and down in that time. But like I said, also, it seems that there's there are a lot of factors that influence that number. So if I wake up in the morning and I take it first thing, it might register 32.5. And then if I have a shower and poop and then do it again, like when I get to work, even after having had a coffee, I can get to work and it'll be 31.8. It's just, it's weird. It doesn't seem, there doesn't seem to be any consistency in it. And maybe it's maybe I should stop doing it and just ignore it. But I am sort of relying on it being erroneous, but sort of erroneous in the same way all the time. If anybody's got experience with that, with maybe watches doing the measurement. So, you know, I just have it on my wrist and I, I just put my fingers on it like that. And it takes a measurement versus standing on a scale that has two sensors. I use the Renpo. Um, the what's it called? I think it's Renfo, R-E-N-P-H-O. That's the scale I use, and it has an app. And so I can basically look at it on my app, on my phone, and I can track it over time, and I can see the trends, and I can see what's going on. And I can do all of it. I can do my weight. I can do my, body, my BMI, my body fat. So which one's right? I don't know. Um, but anyway... That was just the other thing that sort of came to mind. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for today. As far as general feeling, I feel really good. I have, oh yeah, um, I have had a little bit of diarrhea today as well. No idea where that came from. I haven't changed my diet at all, except I did have, interesting. So if you remember on Wednesday... I had that popcorn chicken with a little bit of wheat on it. And then this earlier today, I had some diarrhea. Now I wonder if that's linked. I wonder if it just took a few days for that to work its way through. And maybe that that had upset my stomach, but I didn't really realize it. So it could be, hmm, interesting. I'll have to keep an eye on that. I'll also check myself sort of after having had this teeny bit of curry and a little bit of um, peanut sauce um on the on the satay beef to see if that has any impact on my stomach as well but it was nice having something with a bit of flavor um that's what i'm struggling with the most i'm struggling with the fact that you can put salt and some seasoning on the meat but at the end of the day it's boring 
it's so incredibly boring and I'm just struggling for ways like trying to do the chicken and fajita seasoning which I think is is quite a good way to do it because at least it injects some flavor in and more flavor than I've been having and that's also the challenge with red meat particularly if you're eating steaks and things like that you know you would normally have some sort of a sauce with it and I haven't got around to to making sauces I could do a beurre blanc or something like that maybe or or just some butter and salt but that's god it's so boring um so yeah I'm struggling with that a little bit so trying to find ways to spice things up I haven't looked at any menus yet I haven't looked at sort of menus online and really tried to or books or anything like that to dig into it so maybe that needs to be the next thing that I do is really start looking for better recipes and way to add some more seasoning and spicing to the food that I'm eating just so that it's not yeah it's not so boring the other thing I also do is I found that chewing gum a little bit sugar-free gum is actually quite good also for texture because the gum is a bit at least it's it's got crunchy shell on the outside so in the beginning I think that helps as well and I think that's partly why I like the peanuts too and and eating nuts because it's that texture and not just the soft mushy texture of of meat all the time so there we go after rambling for a few minutes I came out with a couple of interesting things so a few things to think about and follow up and we'll see how we get on but yep I will persevere and I will see you guys anon so have a good evening have a good weekend we'll see you soon bye bye